Welcome to this week's edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine. This is Mark Miller. Mark, this week we had the retirement of three legends. Vin Scully, Dick Enberg, Miles Pizza. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, we should have had a Miles well, we Pizza have box have. here, that's for sure. But paying homage to two of the greatest announcers ever. Absolutely. Well, welcome. We want to talk a little high school football with you today. And first of all, I want to do a review of last week's games. And we'll start off, first of all, with a big game in the Northwest Conference. 8-27, Crestview 26. And Mark, you talk about these games where the last team with the ball wins the football game. Almost happened in this one. Each team alternated scores back and forth, back and forth. Connolly throws a touchdown pass to Jordan Bailey with four and a half minutes to go in the football game. That puts Ada up 27-26. Crestview drives all the way down inside the five-yard line. When the game comes to an end, the clock hits all zeros. Great football game. Ada goes to four and two, two and one in conference play. Crestview also 4-2, but just 1-2 and two in conference play. Conley, another big game, 31-43 of 43 with an, uh, 300 yards and four scores. He hit six different receivers. Drew Klein for Crestview, rushed for 95 and a score, threw for a score. Luke Garadot also had a couple of scores. Great football game in the NWC. Those are two good quarterbacks, and that was yeah. a very close game. Not a lot of real close games, but some important games, like in the BVC. Two of the very top teams, we've been talking about them all year long, got together, McComb and Lipsick. McComb ends up winning what seems to be pretty easily 38-8. to Lipsick drops to 4-2, and two, still 3-1 and one in the league, but somebody's going to have to beat McComb. They are the only undefeated team in the BVC left, 5-1, and 4-0. Oh. They've got a couple of tough ones coming up with Liberty Benton and uh, you know the rest of that schedule. But Malachi Abbott, we've talked about him preseason, during the season, another big game, TD run, TD pass, McComb in the driver's seat in the BBC. NWCC matchup between Sydney Lehman and Riverside. These two teams seem to be playing for the league championship along with, with Fort Laramie almost every year. So you're Sydney Lehman, you're, all, you're, play, you're trailing Riverside 18 to 14, your quarterback gets hurt, now you're in trouble. Nope, the backup quarterback, Dylan Arnold, comes in, throws a touchdown pass in the first half, runs for a touchdown pass in the first half, runs for another one in the third quarter. They end up being ahead 35-30. Lehman comes down, able to win the football game. Here's another big stat, Mark. Riverside Lehman, each the same number of touchdowns. Riverside missed all five PATs. Wow. Now Lehman in the driver's seat, Coach Dick Roll once again with his NWCC championship in his sights. We've seen those PATs be so important oh this year. If you can find a kicker somewhere off the soccer team, we had a wrestler that kicked and made them all, <laughs> yep. almost all of them. Hey, let's look, go back to the BVC. Corey Rawson, tough times the last few years, but a big win over Riverdale, 29-26. That makes Corey Rawson 2-2 two and two in the BVC. But here's the stat you want to hear about. Nathan Warnemont from Corey Rawson. 35 carries, 341 yards, three touchdowns. They're going to ride him the rest of the season if he can do that against Riverdale. All right, let's go right in there and let's look at our stat stuff for highlights and players who did outstanding things individually last week. Can you go first, Mark? All right, Calvin Wilson, the running back from Spencerville, and they've got a few of them, but Calvin carried the ball six times for 161 yards. Yeah, that's right, six times, 161 yards. Three touchdowns. Every other time he touched it, he got in the end zone. That was part of a 331-yard rushing attack for John Zerby's guys. They beat Columbus Grove 35-7 to go to 5-1, more importantly 3-0, looking for that showdown at the end of the season with Jefferson. Let's move to Lima Senior Spartans and Jaden Walker. 17 carries, 215 yards. The Spartans rushed for 333 yards against St. Francis last week in the Glass Bowl. They beat St. Francis 39 to 5. At one point it was 6 to 5, you know, like a baseball score type <laughs> thing there. Yeah. But the Spartans go 4 and 2. They're 2 and 1 on the track. And we'll preview some of their action a little bit later on with yeah. Finley coming up this week. Wapak, one of the really fine teams in our area, still undefeated at 6 and 0. They had a win over Salina, 42 21. Landon Hall, their running back and linebacker, got a lot of mention last year as a great linebacker. They flip him over, let him go both ways. And now he has 188 yards, including a 93 yard touchdown to lead that Wapak crew. They're still rolling. How many in a row regular season yeah. is that for the coach? Up near 90, I think. Yeah, a lot of big games coming up in the Western Buckeye League yep. before the season comes in in yep. week seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's finish up uh, our segment. Usually when we talk about Delphi St. John's, we talk about Aaron Rindell, <laughs> and rightfully so. Touchdown, <laughs> touchdown, touchdown. He's got 20-some you know, through the first five football games. But this week, it's Jacob Youngpeter, the quarterback, comes through. Jacob, 14 of 20, 304 yards, five touchdowns. 
as DSJ beat New Bremen 41-21. Their offense averages 31 and a half points per game. Young Peter, of course, a great football game for him. He completes 14 passes, five of them for scores, as you can see the left-hander right there. They've got a big game this week at St. John's with Fort Recovery at home. they got the run and the pass mix going. Uh, They're going to be you, tough. You get them both yep. going, and that's Coach Schulte, right? That's right. Seems like every year. Last year, a little bit of a down year, but every year he gets a goal, especially better. this yep. time of year. All right, Mark, our play of the week this week comes from the Perry USVA game That's that right. I got to call. That's Here's our right. play of the week. All right, let's take a look at it. We are in the first quarter. You can see there's 6.09 left. It's third and 11 here. What's a great call on third and 11? Screen, screen, screen. Oh, boy. We're going to see it again in slow motion. But watch Austin Sloan. He's going to take this thing 73 yards all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. He also had 178 yards rushing with two touchdowns. Good to have a healthy Austin Sloan back. Let's take a look at it here, though. Watch this. They're going to let the rush come in right there. Look at that cup. All five of those guys behind the offensive line. You get the ball to the guy, fastest guy on the field, and now the people got to work for him. All those blockers, he still had to make a couple of misses, and now he lets his speed work for him, and his guys are starting to find red jerseys up top. Somebody's more concerned about talking than tackling. So off we go. Austin Sloan into the end zone. 73-yard touchdown, and that is our play of the week. He had a couple others in that game that could have been the play of the week as well. Well, he's a, he's a really fine runner. And, Mark, in that play, those linemen were allowed to go downfield because yeah. the pass is completed behind the line of scrimmage. That's, That's exactly right. You up. throw the ball across the line of scrimmage, they cannot go down. That would be an illegal receiver downfield. But if you throw it behind the line of scrimmage, those jailbreak screens, those running back screens, they can go block them up and – Defensive line thought it was going to be a pass for sure. That's, I got a sack, I got a sack. Oh, no, it's a screen. <laughs> there it goes. All right. Well, let's do our question mark of the week this week. And this came about because you and I try mm -hmm. to keep stats and we do color. And mm -hmm. so we had a question that came up. The question came up, if you score a touchdown, does that also count as a first down? And you did some research on it. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> because it counts as a first down if you pass the stick, the line to make, before you get into the end zone. So if you go for a touchdown from the 11, you pass the stick, and then you go into the end zone, it's a first down plus yep. a touchdown. If the sticks are down, and that's what they'll do if the ball is inside the 10, where you cannot get a first down, the sticks are laying on the ground, you score a touchdown, it can be from the nine and a half, it is not a first down, all right? So the answer to that is yes, sometimes no. A couple other things about first downs. Let's. let's educate ourselves. There are no first downs on run back. So interceptions, kickoff returns, punt returns, no matter how long they are, no first downs. No first down on a loss of possession. I get the ball, I run for a first down, I get a 20 yard gain and then I fumble it and the other team recovers, no first down because I didn't retain possession. And here's one that's kind of interesting. I learned on this one. If there is a first down on a play, it's third and eight, and I gain 10 yards, I get a first down. After I'm down, I get a late hit, dead ball, foul, Another 15-yard penalty, there's two first downs. One by rush, one by okay. penalty. I learned on that one. I didn't know that. So and our producer, Ben Rife, says, what if you got first and goal at the nine, mm -hmm. you get an offside penalty, now it's first and 14, you score, that's not a first down. You go back to, are the sticks the up steps, or not? Yeah. Sticks there are you down, you don't pass the line to make, yep. no first down. There you go. All right, thank you for doing a little research mm -hmm. on that. Hey, I, I, I learned, learned. Some, I learned yeah. some things on that too. Let's move into our bright spot of the week this week. And this week we want to focus on versatile players who can do lots of things. Boy, there are three guys that just really stood out. Thomas Williams from LCC in their game against Woodland, Indiana. He had a 30-yard touchdown pass where he threw it, a nine-yard touchdown run, he also intercepted a pass and ran it in for a touchdown. That's versatility. How about D'Angelo Woods, Elida, and their game over Van Wert? He had an 81-yard kickoff return to start the game. That got him off on the right foot. He had a 75-yard touchdown catch. Two huge plays, return and catch. But how about Ryan Lutmer? St. Henry, over Minster. He had a TD run, a TD catch. He kicked two field goals. And he had four PATs, 22 points just yeah. for Lutmer. That's versatility. You give me a couple of those kind of guys, you can win some games, a lot of can't games. you? And we're going to have a chance to see him on Friday night that's this right. week. Yeah. And Anna. We'll yeah. talk about that here in just yeah. a moment, too. Well, something else we want to look at in our bright spot, and that's something we have coming up at Bath High School on October 12th. We're going to show the video on that night, Woodline. And if you've not seen it, it's an outstanding thing. It's got three things in it that I just really appreciate. One of them, it's a true story. It's a history event of what happened in Birmingham, Alabama, as they try to uh, integrate the school system. At the same time, they're trying to integrate their football team and how faith in God brings all those things together and rescues a school, a football team, and a community. 
It's got a lot of great events to it. It's a true story. Those of you who know Bear Bryant, those of you who know Tony Nathan, those of you who know Jeff Rutledge, names from the 70s, and how they end up with this man right here becoming a spiritually strong community and football team, it's outstanding. Bath High School uh, on October 12th at 7 p.m., we're inviting the community in. Elida FCA will be there, Bath FCA will be there, and a great night will be had, hopefully, by all. I can't wait. That'll be awesome. There, there we go. All right, Mark, this week in our Where Are They Now, you've got a guy who's pretty relevant this week. Hey, that's right. Uh, they're playing the Buckeyes this week, and that's from Indiana. James Patton from Allen East High School. Football, basketball, track, standout. Went to the University of Miami, lettered for four years, including all league and captain his senior year. Then he decided, I'm going to be a coach. He coached a lot of different places. For 22 years, he's been a coach. He's been at Rhode Island. He went back to Miami, his alma mater and coach. He went to Northwestern. He was at Oklahoma with Bob Stoops. Now he's in his fourth year at Indiana, coaching tight ends and fullbacks. He has coached in 11 bowl games. His teams have won six conference championships. Wife Nicole, sons Braden, daughters Katie, Mady, and Maddie, and Abby. A lot of IEs there. <laughs> Braden is a football player at Northern Illinois, signed a scholarship there last year. And the Indiana Hoosiers play the Ohio State Buckeyes this uh, weekend. And I know one thing about James Patton. Wherever he's been, his offense, the, the positions that he's coached yeah. and his offenses have been phenomenal. Yeah. This is a really, really good coach that Indiana is really benefiting from. They're relevant again with the big win over Michigan State. And you said you heard yeah. some things about his recruiting prowess. I really did. He's in charge of recruiting Ohio. And yesterday on the Buckeye Roundtable, they were talking about one of the reasons Indiana is getting better is James Patton recruiting Ohio. So a lot of good things going on there. Well, it's time to move into what's coming up this weekend. And we're going to start, first of all, by previewing the Finley game against Lima Senior. Now, if you've not followed Finley this year, you can see on the screen, they're 6-0, they're 3-0. They lead the track in offense. They average 37.3 points a game, but they're also number one in defense, giving up just 12.8. They're led by an outstanding running back, Deion Stinson, typically over 200 yards. Last week, 201 against a very good St. John's defense, which has got three guys that are supposed to be Division I football players on it. He also had a TD catch last week of 54 yards. So this is a very talented Finley team and currently 6-0, 3-0 in conference play. Lima Senior, on the other hand, they come in 4-2. They're 2-1. They have a loss to Whitmer. Um, they're playing very well offensively. We know that Jaden Walker has been over 200 yards at least three times during the season. Big track game for both schools, but also a lot of playoff points. The rule book says Lima Senior needs to get eight wins to get into the playoffs. So this week they have Finley, then they have St. John's, Clay, and Toledo Central Catholic. Must win, I think, coming up this weekend. Finley needs seven wins at least to get into the playoffs. They have not only this week with Lima Senior, but they also have the biggies left, Toledo Central Catholic, Whitmer, and at Ross. Big game this week at Lima Stadium. Spartans been gone for three weeks back home this week. Hey, let's look at Fort Recovery at Delphi St. John's. Fort Recovery comes in at 2-2 two and two in the MAC. St. John's at 3-1, and one, so they're still in the hunt, hoping for somebody to beat Coldwater. Fort Recovery, I think, got upset by Versailles 20 to 7. The reason I say upset, Versailles is very good, but they had Caleb Martin returning. With Caleb out for two weeks with that appendicitis thing, they got beat at Coldwater, no surprise. They beat Minster at home. Now you get your all-star back, your Toledo commit back, and you think, oh, our offense is going to be a lot better again. They only put seven up. It was a touchdown pass that Caleb threw, but nonetheless, Delphus Jefferson is still in the hunt for that championship, and as you mentioned with that game and almost all the games with the top teams in our area now, playoff points will be huge in this one. All those MAC teams, you know, they yeah. want to get in the playoffs. That's where they can do real damage. And let's, let's continue along with that. This is where we're going to be on Friday night. A 4-2 and two St. Henry, 3-1 and one in conference play. They're going to Anna, who's 4-2, and 2-2. Two, two and two. Now, because St. Henry has already lost to Coldwater, their chances of getting a league championship, not real good. Perhaps they can sneak in and get a tie if someone will upset Coldwater. Versus, uh, Anna already has two losses in conference play. So let's focus on the playoffs. Uh, the last time St. Henry was in, it was in 2012. The book says if they get to, to seven wins, they're going to be in. Uh, that obviously starts this particular week with who they got to play because they have Delphi St. John's, Marion Local, and Fort Recovery left, and they got to find a way to get seven wins out of those last four games. That's going to be a tough challenge for yeah. them starting this week at Anna. Anna, on the other hand, they've not been in the playoffs since 2010. Once again, if you look at seven wins, it's kind of the, the breakoff point. Obviously, they have St. Henry this week, but then they have Parkway, Coldwater, and Minster. 
much better chance for um, and the Rockets to get in this week if they get a win this week in, in, in particular. Been a close game the last couple of years. St. Henry by two last year. St. Henry by eight the year before that. They did not play in 2013 and 2012 because of how the max schedule revolves around. But big game this week, and you and I get to be in Anna for St. Henry and the Anna Rockets. Fun. Let's go to the WBL. There's three teams that are undefeated. Ottawa Glandorf and uh, St. Mary's and Wapak. Almost forgot St. Yeah. Mary's. <laughs> And they're all going to beat each other up the last three weeks, but they got to get there. Tough one for OG this week because Kenton comes to town. Kenton's only three and two in the league, but they've really got the offense rolling now a little bit. They've they scored 62 points, had 509 total yards last week in their game. Ottawa Glandorf only gives up 7.7 on defense, second best defense in all of Lima Land. They got to keep pace with St. Mary's and Wapak so that when they get to week seven, eight, and nine. They can try to slide in there and beat the guy that you're competing with for the league championship, but certainly playoffs big in OG's mind right now. And all three of those schools, St. Mary's and, and Wapak and OG, are going to match up in the last three weeks of the season. Okay, let's look at our broadcast schedule this week, and you can see Mark and I will be at St. Henry Anna. Hey, Mark, guess what I read on the internet? Everything on the internet is true, right? Oh, no Said doubt. the grill at Anna is the best concession stand grill in the MAC. Hey, we'll check it out and we'll report to you next week. There you go, we'll do that. Yeah. Well, part of our duties and responsibilities <laughs> to check out internet rumors like that. Okay. Again, in the, in the uh, Western Buckeye League, Salina and St. Mary's, and then Defiance and Wapak, and the big Finley Lima senior game as well on WOS and WTLW this weekend. Mark, I have a new hat. Pretty okay. sweet. I have a new hat, how about that? Jennifer Beck, yeah. new hat. Well, you can do signals now. You can. You know what? What I found out, if you whine long enough, like a year and a half to Jennifer Beck, she'll get you a new hat. Good deal. That's Looks another good. example of a closer look. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.